Right. It's basically like, I fuck whatever I want. Uh -huh. And they fuck me and I just fuck. Yeah. And like Bowie and Mick Jagger, I think that's one of the things where it's just like, man, nobody hits as hard as we hit. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. We should fuck each other. Like, like you, we deserve we to fuck each other. Each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nobody else we're ever going to fuck is going to hit as hard as we do. Absolutely not. So we kind of have to fuck each other. Yeah, right. Like, we owe it to, to ourselves, ourselves in to the fuck world each other. to fuck each other. It's the closest we, we get to fucking so ourselves, which exactly. is what everybody wants to do. Right. Also, mountains of cocaine. Mountains of cocaine. Mountains and of cocaine make you fuck your buddy. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's how that's how the episode starts. <laughs> you know how you want to do a little clip at the beginning? Oh yeah, yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. <laughs> Mountains of cocaine make you fuck your buddy, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. Well, hello there. That's Australian. That's oh, hello. Oh uh, yeah, that counts. Does it? Well, I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like Australians are like the yeah, commonest of the of the, the uh, empire. Not the empire. What are they call the Commonwealth the, countries? Um, is that what they call the, it? It's a Commonwealth, I think. You know the ones that England started, like all of them. No, I'm going back. I'm going into a different thing now. Anyway, this is Courtney, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so welcome back, Airheads. What's another, up, y'all? Another edition of putting on air here in the airstream. Oh yeah, the airstream. Right. Wasn't right. that it? That was it. Yeah, pits. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back, motherfuckers. Yeah. Good to see you. Uh, let's see on this edition of putting on airs. You know me, what I do. Give it this. Mm -hmm. Give it this. Find the Venn diagram where uh, fancy people and our people, i.e., rednecks, trash, whatever. Where they overlap, and uh, this on this or, episode, or the Australians of America, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. we are often called. Yep. Uh, on this episode, it will be horses. Hell yeah, horses, Hor right. horse stuff. Yeah, horse stuff. Horse stuff. Yeah, a lot of a lot of you know horses hit for a lot of people. They do, but and the ultra rich they fucking love horses. They do, and, and shit rednecks, cowboy stuff. Yeah, I know, was about to say. I, I know we're going to get into it, but like with yeah, horses, it pretty much only goes one of two ways. Right, and I can't fucking wait to talk about it. Then after that, we're going to be revisited by uh, Professor Cho, but of course, for a segment on what? We will be talking about Queen Elizabeth II, right? She's the Queen Elizabeth II. Are we talking the, about the current The queen? current one. Okay. Yeah, the current lady. Yeah. I don't know. Is she the second? I think I so. Know, I think I... there was a Queen Elizabeth. There was a Queen Elizabeth back in the, like, yeah, Tudor. Yeah, sure. definitely there yeah, was. Yeah, it was the Shakespeare, the Elizabethan age. There, there was that go. Elizabeth, and then she's the second, uh, which, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be... Talking some fun facts about Queen Elizabeth and new names don't hit for them. So they, they stay reusing names. So I think, and it's funny because I didn't have this in my notes, and we'll obviously talk more about her later. But I think Elizabeth is one of the only ones that like that actually just is her name. Okay, and she because normally they like her daddy name. George, like his name wasn't George. You get a king. You name. get a king name, it's like but, a rap name or but whatever. But she because her name was Elizabeth, they were just like, yeah, we'll just go with that. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's it's fine. like. Benedict or something, you know. Then you get your king names like you James now. You James yeah, the Fourteenth. Yeah, now, right. Exactly. For whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know. I wish I knew. I, it's I'm, just like you just can't have a queen Rebecca or something. Yeah, I you guess. Know what I mean, they're like that ain't it. But it's like in that in the royals, like why the queen fuck, Maggie? Why don't they know? name all their kids a just give king them king names? Queen, because they clearly with. did with right. Elizabeth, but like she was never supposed to be. So right. we're going to talk about this later, obviously, yeah, yeah. but yeah. So I don't know. It's it's fucking weird, but yeah, like it's a rap name. So yeah, circling back. Well, yeah, we got all that and more on this episode of Putting On Air. Circling back though to the Australian thing up top, I noticed a while back, like on the internet, I feel like if you see a uh, if you see a clip, if you don't have if you can't hear him talking or you don't have dialogue or whatever, if you see a clip of some kind of wild looking white dude, yeah doing some crazy shit yeah either with like a reptile yeah. or a boat or, mm -hmm. or alcohol mm -hmm. or a combination of all three something like that it's either i feel like you're like that's australia, either australia or, or florida the, or the south <laughs> yeah, yes or right florida for sure yeah yeah you're right man like we've kind of like loosely made that reference all the time of like how Australians are the rednecks over there but like it is something that I would like to instead of just saying every now and then kind of explore because I bet you there's way more stuff than just the surface level Florida looking shit that they do well and I know they have their own versions of trash they call them bogans yeah okay that's like Australian trash really 
Yeah. So we'd be Bogans over there. Yeah, I yeah. suppose. So I know one. Out in the yeah. outback, you know one? Yeah, works a the, Bogan? Yeah, works the door at the Laugh Factory. Shout out Dan Green. So does Dan, like, does he identify as a Bogan? Yeah. Is that, okay, so like how we are like, it's fine if we call each other rednecks. Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm a Bogan. But Same like, thing. if someone fucking called no, him that's, that, that's that kind wouldn't of hit his, for him? No, no. Well, he is a pretty big dude that will, right, looks yeah. like he could crush your head so right. i don't know if i would just throw it out there without knowing him at all yeah, but no uh, right right yeah, well, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. same they, with you guys though because they'd right. be fighting too. yeah but if yeah, somebody doesn't know you mind. and they're like hey yeah. you get freaking rednecks like it's like okay depends on how they say it as far for me personally yeah. you see know like, I mean? like that's the thing was like that yeah they'd be fighting because like they're they they've got kangaroo like we've yeah. got deer except for their deer will whoop your ass yeah they got like, a box kangaroos and yeah shit. Our you gotta deer, learn how to fight because yeah. you're gonna get your a fucking kangaroo's gonna kangaroo. give you what fur yeah yeah and you gotta run from like when you're out in the bush yeah and you everybody gotta knows it run from like dog-sized spiders when you're like yeah. six so like so you gotta have your boomerang with you right yeah yeah they're tough folks does that shit like i had a boomerang when i was a kid and like i never could never once not like it would no. go like a frisbee but yeah, it, like it ain't anything can go <laughs> right coming it, back is yeah, the, whole, that's the deal. whole deal yeah yeah, yeah. So if it ain't doing so that you couldn't it's you could just never a make it curve stick you're matter throwing. of fact i could no more, but do we probably because i can make a, more, a frisbee more easily do that i think i'm sure we two things either we just don't hit a boomerang we definitely don't hit sure why would we yeah but also that the boomerangs we had don't hit. Right. I'm certain of that. I'd say it's both. Yeah. Because yeah, surely probably. real boomerangs, they go I mean, and they a, come back. Why would, what, what even is it then? Nothing. If it's not curved like, stick. Yeah. It was, it was a toy or like. Oh, it's a weapon. They, well, know, they throw them at kangaroos. I, I, I know that. But like <laughs> if you throw it at something, then it's not coming back because it hits a thing. So, I've never thought about that, but you're right. Like, it's it, like it comes back if you miss, miss. Yeah. so then you could throw it again. Yeah. But if you hit them, then what it's is just it? going to stay there. So, in yeah. the ass. Yeah, but you, yeah. Then whatever you were throwing at is dead, and you go pick it up yeah, but like with it's, your boomerang. Like sure. it being a weapon. But what is the point of it coming back? I it's don't. It's like you're planning on missing. I mean, I don't I guess if I miss, I want after to you come miss, back. Right. After you miss whatever you're throwing it at, you don't want to have to go run and get it before no, you take hit. another. No, that don't hit. Yeah, it's like a backstop for like batting practice and shit. Yeah, it's old as hell. And yeah, right on. 25,000 and 50,000 years ago. The for hunting and discovered killing. in Poland. What? What the fuck? I, well, they threw it and it didn't come back. It ain't in Australia. It landed in Poland. <laughs> for a long ass yeah. way. Yeah. Boomerangs are Polish? I didn't. The Polacks did that? I, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they probably didn't mean for it to come back. That was a design flaw. Tired of chasing stick. Yeah. <laughs> Is Polak what a if fine? You can come, say Polak. What if stick come back? Yeah. yeah. Would be better. Would be better. You would, don't have would, to get stick. Would prefer not, not to, to have, have to get, to get stick. stick. Yes. Stick come to me. Yo, yes. We, yeah. All it's day preferable. we walk around chasing sticks. What yeah. if it comes yeah. back? Yeah. <laughs> it, can you say Pollocks? No, I don't think so. I, I know that you don't mean it in any way bad. But no, I, I mean, I kind of do. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean like. I know what you. Yeah, yeah. My, we've talked about this before on here. This ain't going to hit for people. But as a uh, oft mocked variety of white right. yeah yeah we kind of feel, feel like, like you can well we can fucking make fun of other no, types of white people I if agree. it's a type of white person yeah you can say it. i mean i i kind of agree like fuck em. i think everybody agrees obviously that i'm not not the gay ones right that ain't what i mean <laughs> yeah not right. the gay white people yeah right they cool we cool to them because them being white has nothing to do with them being gay but you fucking make fun of italian and not oh the, you can definitely make fun and, of italians and not the jew ones either no right. of what course about, not but, what about the borderline ones because actually um in in my town i heard <laughs> borderline what yeah, yeah like no no <laughs> yeah ask it for a friend no no um but uh no it's like Portuguese people, for instance. Oh yeah, I don't know. It's like, that's like I like, always grew up thinking like, oh, they're just other oh, white Spanish, people. Spanish but they're people really are white. not. They're no, more kind of it. I mean, Brazil they speak depends. Portuguese. Yeah. And, it depends. So, I, like, because yeah, I, Brazilian people can be white and shit. That's true. Uh, the Mexican people, and can I know be that white, because but, of porn. But Spain and the Portuguese and all that, they. A lot of them just are white. Yeah, right. Like white, because remember when because like, of Europe. The Mayans and all them that got wiped out. Yeah. You know, it was by. They got their God killed. During and the stuff. Inquisition. Got the gold took and the God killed and all that. And that calendar fucked up. Calendar all fucked up. Yeah. 
that was the white man showing up to do that. Right, yeah. But they were Spanish. It's right. like they were Europeans too. I think they're a little darker or whatever. The a level of ignorance right now is astounding. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah. <laughs> but, but, like I read the other day that um, <laughs> Antonio Banderas, yeah. he's from Spain. Yeah, you can make fun of him. Antonio Banderas. Banderas. You can Antonio, do that. Antonio, we covered Antonio, that. Antonio yeah, we did. Banderas. Yeah, we'll probably Just cover like, it a lot. So, yeah. But he. I am Poos. A, in boom. In booze. What a great character. Booze. And what a he crushed that shit. In booze. Dude, Shrek Forever After awesome. where he's fat. It's great. Murders my son. It's dog. hilarious. It's like that fat fuck puss in boots is the funniest goddamn thing they've ever seen. Anyway, he was nominated for Academy Award a few years ago for something. I don't remember which one. Uh and there was all these articles written at the time about Oscars so white and stuff. Yeah. And they a lot they all said like the only person of color in the best actor category is Antonio Banderas. Yeah. And then other people were like, he ain't of color though. Right. And he himself, He's foreign. he himself said, he was like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not a person of color. Right. I'm from Spain. Right. But I'm not a person of color. Right. So My I name's wanna... not Chad Smith. I yeah, feel like right. Spain is definitely the white people of the Latin world. Yeah. And like, I didn't know yeah, that. I mean, like, like, when literally. I was, when I was a kid, I didn't think, because I just heard Spain Spanish. And to me, Spanish was like, yeah, Mexicans. Mexican people. Right. Yeah. And then like, I remember one time I was looking at porn and it was like big old Brazilian butt. And I was like, oh, this is it. Because I love big old Brazilian butts. And I clicked on it. For and sure. It, and it was a white lady. And I was like, mm. I was like, well, they've clearly done this wrong this ain't a brazilian and then i started looking it up and it's like no some brazilians is white and i was like oh shit okay and well again good dude, stuff some some all it, peoples right, is white is white yeah you watch like narcos and there's a like a colombian sicario fucking watch that show colombian sicario on there who fucking looks like uh Looks like Louis C.K. or some right. shit. Not yeah. really. Which but Louis from? Really. He's, he's, he's from there. Mexican. Yeah, he's Mexican. Yeah. yeah. Right. So anyway, um, I had wanted to. Ah, fuck it. I'll still do it. Uh, you ever heard of Mansa Musa? Uh, is that an Italian dish? No. Okay. <laughs> then no. Musa Musa the first M U S A. Okay. Oh no, hold on just a second. This is Musa. This is definitely South African, West Africa. Okay. Musa the first was a Mansa of the kingdom of Mali. That's their term for king. King, right. So he was a Mali, a king of Mali, and is considered by some, and you can't really prove Quantify, this, yeah. but he's considered by some to be the richest person who ever lived. because Monetarily or asset-wise? Just all that. Right. Again, some people dispute it because they're like, How can you know? Hey, he's the all the richest people from history, most of them were kings and emperors and stuff. And it's like they, they, they own technically own the country. The empire, so that's a little different. Right. So yeah, that's part of it. But uh they had a shitload of gold, Miley did, and this dude went on like one of the biggest hit parades in all of recorded history. Just just flossed on them yeah. hoes across the entire continent of Africa to the point that he like devastated the local gold economy by yeah. throwing so much gold around everywhere it made it worthless. worthless right and then he had to himself fix the gold economy so that everything wouldn't fall into ruin because that's just what how was he doing on this hit parade just hitting yeah. No, no, no. no. It, so he was on. A, he was on the a, hit parade. That's actually a thing. Yeah, like the on hit, the radio. Yeah, the hit parade or something. He was on a hit parade. Yeah, yeah, right. But yeah. this was a literal hit, hit parade. parade. No, I know. He was on. A, he went on a Hajj, which is the journey to Mecca that Muslims take. Yeah, right. This is in the 1300s, and he went on a Hajj to Mecca. Yeah, is that him? Is. Yeah, that's him. Nice, looking, looking like a G. Hell yeah. Uh. He went on a Hajj journey to Mecca, pilgrimage to Mecca, and he did what Mali's in West Africa. He crossed all the way across Africa to get to Mecca, right? Went through Egypt, all that shit. So he is like, he was religious. He was doing it for religious reasons. Yeah, he was big time Muslim. Right. It's just so Which is funny. fine. No, of course that's fine. It's but fine. it's just so funny to see <laughs> when someone is that level of religious, but is still doing such a not religious thing by their right. opulence of wealth and I don't know shit. how they feel about it. I know that like yeah, Jesus was. 
I think it's, a needle I think it's, and fucking rich man and all that shit. You'd with be Muslims, surprised. I don't know. It's pretty much the same. I mean, again, I, I, I just, I'm just okay. saying I don't know. I know I I'm saying, know again, it, level of ignorance on display here, but like the three big monotheistic religions like yeah. Juda- Judaism, uh, uh, Muslims, and Christians, it's all bare bones, kind of skeleton like the same. Uh-huh. And it's like they all took the same story. You know what I mean? Just like, well, our guy's this and your guy's that. Well, this dude was like the Oral Roberts or whatever his time, the prosperity gospel oh, people. Fuck that dude. You know, I'm not yeah. saying he was. I'm just yeah. saying evidently because yeah. he was just like, Muhammad would want me to floss. Yeah, right, right, right. And thus I must floss. Right. Yeah. So and he was putting it back in the economy. No, he was the, he was giving it away to the poor and shit on on oh, on his well, fucking, journey. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to imply that this dude didn't hit. Because like it, when a rapper throws a bunch of money in a strip club, like he's giving it to the women there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so he's like stimulating the titty, the, the titty economy. economy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You got to do that. So he um, on this pilgrimage, he had a retinue of 60,000 people, right? 12,000 of whom were slaves, which is kind of mm, funny being a Christian like a magnanimous Arab, yeah. fucking man of the people yeah. giving out you see a beggar and you're like, "Here, take this gold. Take slave. Yeah. Give that beggar some gold. <laughs> yeah. Get him the fucking back." Like, you know? "Can I beg? Is that possible? Could I beg maybe?" "No, you're a slave." "All right. Don't Shut hit. up or I'll kill you." "My bad." Uh, he um he had the slaves. Okay, I found it here. Each of his slaves were carrying four pounds of gold bars. Jesus. He had heralds who were dressed all in silks and bore solid gold staffs yeah. who organized his horses and handled his bags. You know, he had his Gucci bags and stuff. Full time job there. That's right. He uh, had eighty camels, each of which each of which carried between fifty and three hundred pounds of gold dust. God damn! So you just dust people, just yeah, yeah, just, just fucking salt by them with, yeah. with gold, <laughs> just, just spreading the hits around. That was like you know? making it rain back like, then. Yeah, that right here, dude, like, dust. Come here, pe- he's doing over here. Yeah, nice. Come here, peasant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> back on the road. Uh, yeah, and they actually that's, have his uh, net worth here. Holy fuck! Yeah, four hundred billion is the the estimate. I mean, yeah. Some people have said that like it was really what he was doing was letting everybody know right. that Molly hits. Right. It's like, hey, this is what we about. Right. Molly. Yeah. Hitting. Yeah. How they doing now? To like, I don't know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But to let them to like establish Molly as like a a player on the world scene or whatever. It said that after this happened, Molly got included in this famous atlas of the time that was like a map of all the Mediterranean countries and this got them representation on. Like after this, people knew, they're like, oh, Molly. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. And that that's why he was really doing it or whatever to like just put Molly on the map, literally. Right. But either way, it's like the most, uh, a lavish display of power, wealth, utterly unprecedented in its size and pageantry. Musa's Hajj has been regarded as the most illustrious moment in the history of West Africa. I'm trying to think so, of pretty wild. I'm trying to think of. I guess the number one reason that we Fancy haven't motherfucker that we haven't seen a movie about this guy is because how much it would cost to make this goddamn movie. I mean, you get fake gold. No, well, I you, know, but only now has the CGI caught up to that shit. Obviously, gold. Idris Elba would play him. Right? Yeah, well, okay, there clearly Idris Elba's playing him, but I'm who's directing it. That story with a Coen Brothers feel would be hilarious. You know what I'm saying? But I don't like you don't want Nolan doing it. Like I want this to be funny. You know what I'm saying? But this story needs to be fucking told and not by us. Yeah, no, I agree. You're right. It is kind of wild. There hasn't been a movie about. Or maybe, maybe there has. Literally, richest dude ever was. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. I wouldn't have four hundred billion dollars. I mean, yeah, that puts people to like Elon Musk has like sixty eight billion dollars. Do you think they are count kings and emperors? Kind of no, just because. Now I hate this because it's like now we're just like no, this black guy doesn't count, you know. But like, <laughs> but like I don't because they're what like you can't really put you you just you can kind of just say anything then like well I own that like that's this whole country's mine therefore the GDP of this country is my wealth right. So like and also in that it's like okay fuck Bezos and fuck. Elon Musk, I'll say that. But like 
they do at least do a thing to generate their thing and like make moves and stuff. Like he just is the king, and like because you're the king, you have all this goddamn money, and you just like con you know, do you know what I'm saying? I do. Like at I least mean, Bezos and them. Pre- are, I agree with at you. At least Bezos and them are creating something and have like well, a market or whatever. I don't. We don't. I need to get into it right now because I didn't look it up, but so I have the details. But on a future episode, we can maybe circle back to one of the guys from history who's more like a Bezos, I think is uh, Marcus Crassus, who also was supposed to be one of the richest men that ever lived, and he wasn't a king or nothing. Right. He, he lived in ancient Rome, but he was like an ancient Roman businessman. Right. And he did some fucked up shit. Like he'd oh, fucking, shit, we can talk about Rome. He would like burn people's property down or whatever yeah. and then buy, be like, that ain't worth shit. It's all burnt. Right. I'll give you this much money for it. That's what Walmart it ain't worth does. nothing. And people would be like, well, I guess I'll take it. What else am I going to do with this burnt up fucking, you know, mud house or whatever they had dude and, it's then, so funny. and then he would take it and you know like the vet so i mean he was not a good dude no, to right. say the least but he was like a you know he wasn't an emperor and was one of the richest people that ever lived so he was like the bezos of his time who was also not a good dude it's so I funny mean, he how must the play just smashing bitches though oh absolutely I mean, dude he was not gonna... billion dollars and you look like idris elba and honestly For probably sure, dudes dude. too just because like i've always felt like that people like that dude, they're not gay or straight. They're just, I hit and a hole's a hole. You know they're what I'm poly. saying? Yeah, like kings and stuff. At a certain point, they're like, I've fucked all the bitches. Like, I have to d- do something different. Like, tuck Isn't it in. Isn't that what they used to say about Freddie Mercury? Or yeah. Something like that? Yeah. He's like, I and mean, Prince. He, he was gay. And Prince. It was like, Freddie Mercury wasn't gay. He just ran out of bitches to pork yeah, or something that, like that because he some, did both and somebody asked Prince I mean that's just being you know, bisexual right. Jagger and they Bowie, asked Prince right? or yeah. they asked uh, uh, yeah Prince one time they're like so are you gay or bisexual and he goes I'm Prince yeah right it's basically like I fuck whatever I want uh-huh. and they fuck me and I just fuck yeah and like Bowie and Mick Jagger I think that's one of the things where it's just like man nobody hits as hard as we hit Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. We should fuck each other. Like, like you, we deserve we to fuck each other. Each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Nobody else we're ever going to fuck is going to hit as hard as we do. Absolutely not. So we kind of have to fuck each other. Yeah, right. I we owe it to, to ourselves, ourselves and to the fuck world each other. to fuck each other. It's the closest we, we can get to fucking so ourselves, which exactly. is what everybody wants to do. Right. Also, mountains of cocaine. Mountains of cocaine. Mountains and of cocaine make you fuck your buddy. And... <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's how that's how the episode starts. <laughs> you know how you want to do a little clip at the beginning? Oh yeah, yeah. at the beginning. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good one. <laughs> Mountains of cocaine make you fuck your buddy, <laughs> don't they? Yeah, it's it's been done for sure Happened before. All right, let's get into horses. What do you say? I would love to get into fucking horses. <laughs> Hey everybody, spring has sprung, and if you're trying to get sprung, boing, then you need to holler at our friends over at Blue Chew. By the way, spring is here, but we're also getting close to summer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and summer a, won't be a bummer. Summer will not be a bummer. Get you a new winter. Yeah, and also a hummer. There you go. God damn Boom. it. Boom. It was right there. I got it. You got it. Thank God you saved it. Yeah, hell, I was proud of the bullshit I pulled out. I know. It's it. even better. Anyway... Dick stuff this summer. Let's get it. Yeah, let's get it. Tell them all about our friends over at Blue Chew Tray. <laughs> Blue Chew. Uh, Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and, importantly, at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime you want to, day or night, so you can plan ahead for business time, or you can just be ready whenever business should arise. The process is simple. You sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days, which is the best part. It's all done down there on the internet there. Mm-hmm. It's all online. You ain't got to go to the doctor's office. You ain't got to go to the pharmacy. You don't have to feel awkward about getting you wiener pills from the pharmacist who encouraged Casey he went to high school with. Don't you don't have to do none of that, right? Also, Blue Chew's tablets are made right here in the U.S. of A., prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package, and we do mean package. You can't beat it, can you, Joe? I guess you can beat it if you know what I mean. All these dick jokes. What do you think about it? I absolutely love it. I've been using it for years. I wouldn't pork without it. I mean, I could, <laughs> but why would I? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love it. My wife loves it. It's her favorite uh, day of the month whenever the postman gets there and she sees that little white envelope. It means it's blue tube time. It means it's time for daddy to throw his back out once again. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you too can get with the chew. That's right. And if you think you could benefit from a little extra confidence when it's time to perform, if you're trying to get you a new wiener, which you know you should, blue chew can help. Your wiener don't hit. Get a new one. Get a new one. Blue chew. 
We've got a special deal for our listeners. You can try Bluetooth for free. I said free, F-R-E-E, free, baby. Can't beat that when you use our promo code P-O-A at checkout. You just pay $5 for shipping. That ain't shit. Ain't shit. Go BlueChew.com, promo code P-O-A, to receive your first month for free. That's BlueChew.com. Go there for more details, important safety information. Type in the promo code P-O-A when it's time to do your ordering, and you get a whole month for free. For just five dollars shipping, you know that hits. You should go do it, and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast and getting us a new winner. Yeah, Blue Chew. Who's going to take care of your family if something happens to you? What would they do without your income? If you don't have a plan, you need to go to GoliathLife.com. Get a quick quote for more than twenty carriers. You don't even have to leave the house. If you need a medical exam, they'll send somebody to your house or office. You're in total control. You pick the rates, you pick the payments, you pick the terms, you're in total control, but it gives you and your family peace of mind. What if something happens to your income? Hurry to goliathlife.com. So horse is very, very much a fancy people thing like fucking billionaires worldwide. They love to watch horses fuck, you know, um, to make new hitting horses for them and stuff and all the horse racing and dressage and stuff. We talked about horses a little bit on a previous episode. We yeah. mostly talked about jacking them off, though. Yeah. Uh, but that's why you got to jack them off. This is a great... I'm so glad that I picked Elizabeth for this, too, because we're just going to be able to cover some of the same stuff and the horse thing. Because, yeah, you're right. They are super... The rich folk are super into this horse shit. Yeah, and it's like... It's one of those things where it's like anything that can kind of become like a pissing contest with yeah. rich people yeah. really fucking hits for them. Right. So with horses, it's really it's really set up to maximize the hit level for right. ultra rich people because it's very exclusive. You can't peasants can't be competing right. in it, which hits for them. It's very high stakes. It's like gambling. Yeah. You literally like winning and losing yeah, saying, and it makes You're them taking money. other people out yeah it could be an investment it's just like it is just their shit yeah dog because yeah because it is one of like it it's like they spend a lot of money on it but like you can also be like, well it is an investment like we you know we're gonna make money on this horse yeah so uh russ has got that pulled up over there horse racing's richest people the number one guy is like the Fucking the Sheik of Dubai, nice. the ruler of Dubai. You know how Dubai be. We Man, should talk about I, Dubai. At some I, we point. really should. That's a like, fucking I, wild. You say ass you place. know how Dubai be, and it's like I I know what you mean by that, but like I really don't. Like I know a couple surface level things, but like it blows my fucking mind. Like it looks every time Dubai does some shit and they show a picture of it, I'm like, is that where the Jetsons are from? Right. What the fuck is right. happening right yeah. now? And it's like all their like ideals are so backwards in the way that they treat citizens and stuff, and you wouldn't think that that country could also have like space buildings well oh dog. no oh wow but then Fuck why don't texas do? be like that why don't texas have space buildings because that shit don't hurt for them right they more they won't like fucking do, 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 yeah, do, do. yeah they won't yeah fucking corrals yeah right which corrals do corrals it? and fucking rodeo yeah. rings and yeah, stuff right. you know why because horses hit for them <laughs> that's true as well uh so yeah, so I, I just remembered this. I don't. Very embarrassing story. Although I genuinely Good. misheard the guy talking about Dubai. It just reminded me. I haven't thought about this in years. I was drunk in a bar in Cookville when I was in college, and there was this nice young brown gentleman at the bar, and I stuck struck up a conversation with him, and he clearly wasn't from there, from America. I mean, and I asked him, I was like, "So where are you from, buddy?" And he said, "Dubai." But I heard, we're in a loud bar, I'm drunk, whatever else, I heard Mumbai, mm -hmm. right? But he said- I heard he, Mumbai. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> Word? You can be from there? So that's how I'm talking. Yeah. Oh, right? Yeah. And he says Dubai, and I, go, and I swear to God, I go, ah, India. <laughs> I said it exactly like that. Like, ah, Yes. India. That's literally a, and like he a was, scene from dude, Dumb and Dumber. I know. And he was like, you, he, he was so visibly disgusted. Do you know what I mean? Like, he, he was just, he was like, what? Yeah. No. Ugh. And he just like turned, <laughs> India's gross. That's on it. They ain't got space buildings. <laughs> we don't poop in the street. 
<laughs> it's so fucking. That really is the scene from Dumb and Dumber at the beginning when he's like, "Where are you from?" And she's like, "Austria." And he goes, "Austria." Put another shrimp, shrimp on, on the, the barbie. barbie. Like, that's my <laughs> yes, That's what I did. <laughs> but Kent, I just misheard what he we said. We don't poop in the streets. We have space buildings. Yes. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> dumb redneck piece of shit. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, that just popped into my head, and I had to uh, demean myself a little bit. So, anyway. Is that Bernie Madoff? No. Oh, John McInerney. Okay. Type, sort of type of motherfucker. But they're all billionaires. You got to be to play in this game. First of all, just horses are just expensive, They're and very I don't mean, and I don't even mean just buying them. Buying these horses is crazy expensive, yeah. but I just mean a horse. They're running them. I mean, it's big as shit. Think about how expensive a dog is. It's right. like fifteen dogs. It's put like together. apparently a horse is like fifteen dogs put together. Do you right. do you have the math on that? <laughs> <laughs> I love how excited you got. I was, I was like, well, fuck it, I got it right. Because, like, I do. I, guess I, thought, I was thinking maybe 12, 13 dogs, but then I went with 15. I'm so the it's rain crazy man. that I nailed it. Well, like it's that. weird. I'm the rain man of, like, real stupid shit like that. Like, we had the episode <laughs> where we were doing, like, like the rain, rain man, man is the, the rain, rain man, man of, of stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I mean, no. no the I, stuff, the number stuff he I, did wasn't. You, you know, know what I mean? I, yeah, I do know. What by you mean. that, it, like when we did the first episode, we did the Cockney Rhyme. And see, I'm just I'm real good at stuff that you have no business being good at. Yeah, and it would have like <laughs> converting dogs, dogs into horses. horses. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Real if good you, at that <laughs> dog horse math. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Huh. So anyway, it's like. Yeah, it's like having a horse is like having a fucking boat or whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. It's like they're expensive a to boat just have shits. and maintain a boat that shits. Yeah. And you have to feed. Well, you got to put gas in a boat. Anyway, they're expensive to just have. So it's prohibitive, you know? Right. Like, and that's part of the reason why mostly just people with money fuck with them. And again, anything that, yeah, poor, like golf. Anything that poor people can't do, they love it. It hits for them to do. So hard. Because then you Which, can, I mean, you I mean here's that, the thing is that you stuff you that deal poor with people all can't them. do does hit. Right. Because that's what. Hitting that, is. That's what hitting yeah, is. Right. Doing stuff poor people can't do. <laughs> For sure. You're right. It is kind of a self fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> right. you that's know how I, I mean? look at the Cheesecake Factory now. I'm at that level. Abs- yeah, like, fuck it. I mean, obviously, Chili's? there's, some, there's some stuff that like transcends, uh, fuck, like, you know, jacking off, you know, stuff like that, where it's like that hits for every class. But like, for the most part, if poor people can do it, it doesn't hit that hard. So the other thing that's wild about this, you look into this, it's all super competitive. All these super rich billionaires, some of the richest people on earth fuck with it. And they don't, it still seems like it's kind of a crapshoot in terms of the amount of success they have. Right. Like I read, like that guy, the you're sheik, still dependent on a horse. The sheik has, he's had probably thousands of horses at this point, different race horses. And I think he's only ever, he's never won a Kentucky Derby, not yeah. one in like 30 years. Because it's fucking hard to do. And you also got to get like kind of lucky. And there's been horses that have sold for. So, first of all, the main thing horses can win a lot of money in races, right? But the main thing they do is fuck other horses. Uh, yeah, yeah. The stud fee. Yeah, oh, it's great. That's where that's what's up. they really make money on yeah. a horse. Yeah. So, horses are fucking sell. There was a horse that sold for $70 million mm-hmm. because they know horses, its babies are going to hit but see what i'm saying is about it being a crapshoot you look up the list and there's a yeah russ has got it pulled up there's a list of the most expensive horses ever sold and a whole bunch of these like look right here snoffy dancer stop yeah. russ go back a little bit 10.2 million dollars he never raced despite his impressive pedigree he was rumored to be embarrassingly slow <laughs> and, was re- and was retired to stud that didn't go well either as he was discovered to be oh all but God. infertile Siring only four falls, three of them suffering very limited racing Oof. careers. $10 million total bust. He's like a Ryan bust. Leaf. It's like Ryan Leaf. Leaf. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Leaf of fucking horses. On this list of the most expensive horses ever sold, a lot of them are like that. Right. A lot of them it's didn't. Just cause, just cause it's, a lot it's, of them didn't work out. Right. And there's plenty, a lot of the hitting stud horses on planet Earth, the ones that get like $300,000 per jack load off. of horse cum. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they jack off. <laughs> No, they so they fuck, we've covered dog. this they, too. No, they, they get it in. No, they they do, but like a lot. I of, know there are people who jack horses off. You got a buddy that jacks horses off, right? Uh, several, talk, yeah, yes. So, but a lot of times, <laughs> yes. A lot of times, what they do though is that they will. The horse will be fucking, and then they'll like pull it out of the end and shoot it into a thing. Like sometimes because like that's not necessarily the horse that they want to put it in, but that's the like. 
the horse that they're wanting to put to come in is like somewhere somewhere this is else. Just some gutter slut horse to come <laughs> yeah, in, just like yes. like you don't even get to have, have the baby. baby. You just, you just, just get fucked. Yeah, I'm pretty. Now, by the way, this <laughs> could be horse whose entire purpose. Covered this. I could also, be. I could be, make, I could was, be making this up. This was but, the only thing we talked about with horses last time. Remember, like, uh, uh, remember like the a lot of real times, ball for uh, horses that they have. Yeah. yeah, a lot of times it's artificial insemination, and they just like yeah, they just have a cum dump horse that just fluffer. And just fucking gets real for a minute. And then, like, in a porn, they pull the horse's dick out and shoot it all over a bag. <laughs> and then they go put it in a, a horse that hits harder. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I think they just be fucking other horses. I do. They definitely do. If they just happen to be yeah. like, oh, these are the two horses we want to fuck and they happen to be here. But, like, but- transporting a horse... Getting those two horses together sometimes you doesn't always logistically do make sense. For sure. So um, what I was going to say is some of the ones – so then what happens – if you're a horse that hits it racing, you fast, yeah. and you retire, and it's time for you to start fucking for money, yeah. right? You're going to get a good stud fee at first. But if your little horse babies don't hit, yeah. that stud fee going to – fall off a cliff you finna be glue so you could be yes and before Real long expensive you gonna glue. be glue <laughs> yeah they is, glue these motherfuckers up it, dog do you know anything about how like is it their i've always thought yeah, like I think. I, is it their hoofs that they turn into glue i think so yeah it, their hoofs don't grow back no they grow i think because they have to have them shaved and stuff well or then like why don't trimmed. they just make them glue and then still let them live because it don't hit for them to have this shitty horse around. Oh, right, 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 right. You don't but they could keep making glue. glue. But they could keep making glue. You don't give a fuck about glue. Right. They're trying to make space for a horse that hits. <laughs> right. Get this fuck sorry glue. ass horse out of here. Yeah, right. Anyway, that's so funny that uh, horses are glue. Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen dogs equals glue. glue. Yeah, fifteen dogs are glue. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's horses that didn't hit it racing, right? But they get studded out for cheap. But then their horse babies do hit, right? And now all of a sudden, so some of the most expensive right, like horses. Every NFL running back's dad wasn't an NFL running back. Right. Sometimes it don't work. Sometimes right. it does, and it there's not. It seems to be very much a crapshoot. Right. Like I said, looking at it, it's like just being the richest motherfucker who buys the most expensive horses and makes them fuck. That don't mean you're gonna hit at horse racing. Okay, why? Well, so, and that, I'm kind of, I, I kind of hits for me. It does. I like that. It about does. It. But can I give you a Even, fact? But the dude who does win, he's a fucking multi-millionaire too. Right. It ain't like there's an average Joe on the come up in the horse racing world. But it, I just think that's kind of cool that you can't yeah. just buy, buy your like, a championship. It's not like like Saban having like Nick Saban right now ha- on his out of eighty five scholarship pl- or seventy five scholarship players. Uh, well, of 85 scholarship players, 77 of them were in ESPN's top 300 high school recruits. Right. So, but here's the thing. I will give you this fact that I was going to talk about here in a little bit, but it actually works for your segment, though. Queen Elizabeth, in between the years of 2013 to 2017, had 186 horses that she entered into races, and 86 of them won. Okay. So she did hit at it. Right, it, but but they those weren't like they weren't like the whatever Breeders' Cup Belmont Stake, like yeah, the, oh, the, right. the championship. Yeah, I guess you're right. They, they were, were just, just like, winning it, races, it, right. which I hit. It hits yeah. harder than losing races. Right, yeah, yeah, for sure. You, but right, I know she right. wants the top, the top prize. Yeah, and obviously she hasn't. Otherwise, we'd have heard about that. Right. So anyway, then there's also there's a couple other some there's dressage mm-hmm. and jumping horses and dressage is the dance that shit's They're like, fancy yeah. as fuck too this. dressage is just like yeah you get on a horse and look all fancy you and the horse look fancy together yeah. and they're like i really fancied it up yeah that's a fancy fucking horse yeah i give it a 10 yeah and then they give you a million dollars or whatever but they uh yeah dressage they do like apparently the actual sport of it is like the horses do these like move these yeah. intricate movements. And, and one of them's called a pet do. And the uh the rider like coaxes the horse into doing this in a very minimalistic way. So it's like the rider is controlling the horse, but you just but look, you don't know to it. look at them, you can't tell. Right. It looks like they're just sitting there, right, you know, stuck up their ass style. But they're just like people kicking be, it barely but, but really the they're telling them pirouette, like, yeah, you dumb horse exactly. piece of shit. Yeah. 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 Prance your fucking Hoofing there. Yeah. Dip shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then jumping, they just jump. Right. Which is. Which is impressive. Yeah. That's most of the rich people horse shit, except I did want to say that, uh, and I'm going to talk about rednecks and horses, oh, too. No, I can't wait. But um, that's most of the rich people <sighs> horse shit. 
but I did want to say also that rich people and horses has always been a thing, literally always. As a matter of fact, it is widely believed that the world's first ever rich people, the world's first ever like 1%, yeah. were the people who figured out horses. That checks out. Because like the that first was a people, car. Imagine, that was dude, a car. Imagine being some fucking peasant in a riverside village in a mud hut. Yeah. You, you're plucking your goose. Yeah, you're you're about coughing. To cough to death. You're about to cough to death. Yeah. That's Three, a shirt, by the way. Yeah. Um, you, uh, and then a fucking centaur rides oh, yeah. up, basically. Oh, yeah. You've never seen nothing like that before. A motherfucker rides up with a spear sitting on a fucking monster. Yeah. A beast. Yeah. And there's 50 of them or whatever. It's like, dude, I would have to fucked. I would, <laughs> and yeah. that's what happened. They domesticate the first people to domesticate these horses. They then just went around conquering everybody else. I would and have now to, they owned all the shit and they became like the first like ruling class or whatever. Basically. I would have to imagine that back in the first days of war, having a horse, the people who had horses versus the people who didn't have horses had to be about the same as the first people who ever had machine guns. Right. You know what I mean? That very, versus someone that didn't. Very, very much so. Yeah, um, before you get into the redneck part, I wanted to say this because it's funny because an ad for one of these just popped up. And I, so I've been looking into get this new type of camera, which we're not sponsored by them, but I'll go ahead and say it's called a Pivo, okay. right? Shout out Pivo. Shout, Shout out, out Pivo. Pivo. Send us a Pivo. Why wouldn't you send us one? Well, anyways, what it is, is you set your phone in it and it like tracks you and this thing will like, oh, the, yeah, the, yeah. It's, it's pretty like cool. an electronic like it, gimbal. It's an electronic gimbal. Yeah. yeah and it will really move cool. and it can track you or whatever. Well, like. The reason it stood out to me is one of its big features and one of the biggest clientels they have is that it's it can also track a horse. Like it's got human <laughs> facial recognition, but a bunch of people apparently use this to film them hitting on their horse because no matter where they go with the horse, it will follow the horse around. But that's a huge like that's a big selling point. They were like, mm. you got a horse. Do You want to film the horse? Get this. Mm. So anyways, that just happened to pop up. All right, so rednecks like horses too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Was horses a thing in Chickamauga? Like there was a few, there was like a group I, of guys who like yeah. rode horses and shit. So here's my experience. But you know, with, it's kind of real poor. It wasn't a whole lot of horses, but there were some old boys who liked horses. They just love all that cowboy shit. They love to root and toot. So, you know, rednecks are into horses, too. Um, so here's experience my experience with, with horses. When I was a kid, we didn't have horses, but my friends. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait to hit this, Russ, but I want you to say this in a minute. They, they okay, can't really, set it they up can't first. Okay, I can't wait. So when I was a kid, like, we didn't have horses because, well, first off, you know, I've said my mom and dad were not only new money, new college, like new any. They're the first ones in our family we've ever hit for anything. So we didn't come from a long line of horses, except for. My mom's dad actually did, but he was her dad. They didn't have anything to do with each other. Like she, he left the family, and we only started talking to him later. He did have a bunch of horses in a farm. He had emus and shit. I rode an ostrich when I was a kid and shit like that. The only time I ever saw my papa. Totally see you on an ostrich. Yeah, I hit on it. Yeah, and so any fucking who. <laughs> So when we were kids, though, we had this uh, – one of our best friends was the Preacher's family, and they had horses. Like, they're big, super, like – you know, like, they're definitely the core base for get the show Yellowstone. Like, they're all about that shit. Well, they had Rusty, Dusty, and Strawberry. Those were the horses. And we would go when I was a kid, and we would ride. And, like, I remember it was, like, kind of fun. I was a little scared. I just remember, that like, they instilled fear in you, like, do not – Whatever you do, go behind this horse. Yeah, it will oh, kick yeah, you dude. in the head and you You'll will go die. You, yeah, right. They fall down a wheel, goes back the other yeah. way. I don't know. So I rode him and it was kind of fun, but then like, it wasn't really my thing. Well, my mom really enjoyed it. And then one time she uh, went, I think, with my papa and she was uh, riding this horse on the side of a mountain. And this horse kicked my mom off of the horse and almost flung her off the mountain. Like yeah. it, my mom very nearly died, um, and to hear her tell it, it, no, it don't hit. To hear her tell it, as soon as that happened, my papa pulled out a shotgun and shot the horse in the head. <laughs> <laughs> it was like fuck that. Oh, yeah, but they'll take any excuse to so, shoot a horse, dog. And, and my, so my mom was like super. Like she never owned a horse, but she had a bunch of friends that that rode horses, and because of that, she took my sister to like horse lessons and stuff. But when that happened, 
We were like, no, we're no, done with horses. No more horses. No yeah, more after, horses. After you watch your fucking dad assassinate a horse in front of you, yeah. like it's like okay, after my, nearly being killed, killed by, by the, the horse. horse. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was it. And then the other horse got green horse. What's colic horse colic? It would turn green and died. What they can do that? They turn green and died. I didn't, I didn't see that in my research. Yeah, it's like horse There's polio. A lot of things can turn green and die. Yeah, it turned green and died. Yeah, well, you'll, well you'll Russ, have look that. up, look up horses turning green and dying and dying. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, while he's looking for that, I'm gonna set up this clip he's got because I haven't watched this clip. Also, I have not yet watched Yellowstone. I know it's very popular. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm it's great. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah, it's awesome. So, my buddy Thompson. You know, if you listen, hopefully, to our, friend of the if show. You listen to our other shows. You know about Thompson. He's my best friend from back home. I was back home recently, hanging out with Thompson, watching football. He brought up Yellowstone. That's As, for him. Yeah, it does. It, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, just talking about it." And he was like, "He's like, thing is, man, like." They do a whole lot of horse stuff so on much that show. Stuff. It's honestly and a it's show like, within a show. And it's like, like I watch it, and it's like the horse like slides yeah. or, or the horse does a circle. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, horse did a circle. Yeah. But on the show, they're like, who? That they do. You see that horse did that circle? And I'm just like, I just, uh, it sure did a circle. Yeah. But I can't look at the horse stuff and know what it hits about it. I'm the same fucking way watching that show. He tells me that. And that's exactly how he described it. And I've not seen the show. So I was reading stuff earlier and I texted him and I said, can you tell me what to look up to find what you're talking about? And he said, look up raining. Right. Yeah. So I Google raining and I find this YouTube clip of the Team USA raining team. Yeah. Right. And with the context of what Thompson said and the way he described it, I just want you to watch this clip. Yeah. On YouTube again. Y'all have both seen the show. Yeah. So but dude, but, but Russ, Russ is on you. Want, Russ is want a little bit of volume on this. Yeah, because yeah, you need please. to hear the crowd. Boys, okay. yeah. And we don't have to watch the whole thing. I think you get the idea. Oh, I'm for it. Quickly. Is dreamy. Yeah. Look, yeah. Listen. Oh, yeah. See? Yeah. This is how they show um, Kevin just, Costner the horses when he's trying to buy when they come in and start up. spinning around how like a maniac. They are. I know. It just cracked me because it's exactly like Thompson described yeah. it. Having not seen it, I was like, these people, listen, it's like, Was I it just see a horse. Running. I just see a horse just running. Being a horse. And it's like, and again, when he did the circle again, I'm sitting watching, like, like, yeah, that, the horse is doing a circle. Yeah, right. But I couldn't watch that horse do a circle next to another horse doing a circle and be like, oh, that horse hits its circles. This other horse, he ain't hitting his circles. Yeah, and one, you know of, the, I mean? and one of the latest episodes, there was a scene where, like, they're going, and Taylor Sheridan actually plays a character in there, and he's this real hitting horse dude. And, like, he gets on a horse, and, like, all the all the Yellowstone motherfuckers are sitting around watching. That, it does that. That's what it does. It stops, kind of, like, does a, like, slide into second base or whatever, and dude, when they do that, the music gets right. insanely dramatic. Right, right, There's right. like a dolly shot going to someone. They're just like, yeah, they do that. And everyone is like, my fucking God. Right. Did you see that? And me and Amber sitting there watching it like, it looked like Watch the horse. Watch it back up. Look at it. I These people are losing their minds, I guess, dude. I guess what's... Like, have you ever I guess in your it, life? It is kind this of is impressive that you're like, how yeah. is he making it do that? <clears throat> like the, because that. I mean, dude, I. It's a, it's right. a, but yeah, but you're right. But those people are just, they know something we don't know. Right. And all right, you could cut it off for us. I, and I just, so uh, they know something we don't know. I've mentioned this before. I've yeah. told you this before. But when I was in high school, I was officially, there might be records of somewhere you can probably look it up. But when I was in high school, I was one of the very Fattest, worst dumbest. horse judgers <laughs> yeah. in the state of Tennessee. Horse treasurers? Horse judgers. I thought you said horse treasurer. I was like, you would be a horse treasurer. Right. Yeah, no, Trey's I mean, good with money. You had to hit, and that's fine. You did hit, but yeah. you kind of you kind of stepped on what I, I was trying oh, to hit bad. as well. It's I'm okay. so sorry. Yeah. One of the worst horse judgers in the state of Tennessee. Right. I'm so sorry. You I go fucked this whole and thing up. Uh, it was a 4 H thing. I yeah. did it because it was, you know, some uh, country hoes on the bus. You right. know what I'm saying? Uh, but you go and you look at horses and then you're like, this horse hits. <laughs> <laughs> or, 
or, or this horse don't no hit. hit right and apparently i got all of them wrong really i was like that horse hits they're like that horse doesn't hit but, but why didn't the person <laughs> that tells you that you were wrong be the horse judger because it's like a competition oh right they're like professionals there's right. high school kids doing it and it's them being like oh like in napoleon dynamite when he goes and it. drinks the cow's milk and shit you don't hit it telling if horses hit or not yeah right like that's oh, what they're there to do they're okay. there to judge the judges sorry that i don't know if horses hit yeah i couldn't have given a fuck less about it yeah. obviously but it, yeah it wasn't it was like a 4-h competition that was my event but, right yeah it yeah. was also soil judging land measuring it's so funny and shit like that and i was the horse judger that, and i was fucking and, terrible and our next event horse opinions yeah like, right. that's yeah. so fucking funny and that i had the worst horse, horse opinions, opinions. you should have just done the opposite yeah, I think this horse hits i better write down that this horse this don't horse hit. don't hit yeah yeah, yeah i would have no. done a lot better he's if I'd have done brilliant that. i'm being cheeky about no, it I, know, I don't remember I know, this I know, specific, I but it, it was like you it, you know you had to like you had to give your rationale for why you thought the horse, the horse hit. hit right you had to talk you about like, it's, like hits don't hit yeah no yeah. you had to be like hits because his cat his leg muscles here or look at the vein in that dick yeah right yeah. stuff like that would this dick factor into it dick didn't factor into it because horses dicks get talked about a lot you yeah, know we've done a, plenty of it right but i'm just saying like i would so i would think that like in that world like their dick would actually be a thing maybe if it ain't high school kids then they get in that's like college level horse yeah, judging right. horse when, you, when you get into the dicks yeah right they don't they don't put the dicks on 15 year olds you know what i mean oh hey hold on did, did you but find we this didn't do the dick did you find this in your research that like <laughs> horses that like like horses that race and stuff like that are how m much is it a boy horse versus a woman horse like, is it usually the man horse? I believe it is usually okay. the man horse. Because, like, you know, with cows, it's like they're a completely different thing. Like, there's lady a bull horse. and there's a cow, but, like... Yeah, that's true. But a lady horse could be fast. I think they mostly just get fucked. <laughs> Cum dumped. Yeah. 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 Stay in the horse kitchen. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Some of them... No. For sure, lady horses... Can be fast. You know, mares. Yeah. I believe they're called. But is there like a they WNBA can... of like horse no, races no. where it's just women horse and it's just like, this is good. And everyone's just uh, lying to themselves. Yeah. Right. They can and do race and also dressage horses and jumpers and stuff. They can all be girl horses. But I, I, I was about think, to say, I kind of figured that's what they would do. But I think that it's mostly boy horses. Yeah. I mean, that horse that was real good at circles. Yeah. That was a girl horse. Right. All right. Okay, well, I mean, that's about it for horses. If you ain't got any uh, things you want to Did add. you write this? Oh, no, no, I think, no, hell no, I didn't write this. This is a, yeah, I thank you, Russ, I forgot about this. I found this really dumb website that says you might be a redneck horse owner if, and none of them are that great, but it's also funny to it's me. It's Foxworthy-ish. It's funny, well, it's supposed to be Foxworthy-ish. Right. It's like a take on Jeff Foxworthy, but it's like, I want to know, I want to know if any of these made sense to you. Some of them do, but like. Do them like Foxworthy. Your, t your, your tool kit consists of duct tape, WD-40, and baling twine. It, you might be a redneck horse owner. I don't think we said that. Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? I, I mean, at the yeah, beginning. You have to say it. In, in, it it's like Jeopardy. Yeah. Toolkit consists of duct tape, WD-40, and bailing twine. Yeah, I don't really. What does that mean? What? Well, yeah, I don't know. But right, I'm certain saying. that there are some fucking people. It's just my pun, horse laughing it's at just this shit. Kills right. in the horse horse world, dude. Uh, your horse you, blankets have been repaired with duct tape, a lot of duct tape. You have ever considered pay the hay man or the mortgage and huh. decided on the hay man? That's a good one. That is, is a that good like one. And I, I do, I do know that hay is expensive on account of my brother-in-law is a hay man. Like he, him and his daddy are the hay man. Really? Yeah, one of the hay men. But like, yeah, they have. That's a big deal for them. Like, they have a big. You know, they've got a, a bunch of land, and so they take. Uh, they, you know, I mean, when I was at dude, when it, when I was in high school. Like that's what we we went to there, and we would bail hay for them, and basically, you know, it was like here's twenty bucks and all the beer you can drink tonight. Does hay just grow? Yeah, like if you got a bunch of land, can you just is it just like well, we'll come back later and it'll be hay. It'll be I don't, and I then don't, we'll and then we'll cut that hay and sell it because it seems I don't like no, because I let my granny's yard go for a while and it and never it was hay. hay. <laughs> it was just grass. He <laughs> waiting on this to be <laughs> hay. hay she hay. never turned into a mummy. Why don't you mow the yard? yard never... I'm waiting on hay. <laughs> yeah. 
church. You never turned into a mummy or yard never yeah. turned into hay. Uh-uh, just a whole Things, bunch of fucking lies lot of I've been let told. Downs, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I guess it's like a certain seed or whatever. But I'm they, sure it is. I'm just wondering how easy it is. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, can't be too fucking hard. They do it. But like, you know, they, like, they, fuck Lloyd. I'm just kidding. It was a joke. Um, but yeah, they, they've got hay and like we would, you know, we would help them bale it and shit like that. All right. I like the top one there. You buy a top-notch horse feed, but keep an eye out for sales on Raymond Noodles to feed your kids. There you go. Lord, oh, yeah, you, might, you might be a redneck out. horse owner. Yeah. All and right. My, okay, Professor the, Okay, Cho. this one definitely don't make sense. The most the most romantic gift you've ever received was an arena drag. I don't I mean, even know what them words are. I mean, again, I'm sure it makes sense to uh, horse people, but I ain't got a clue. I tried to find that, what you said, Corey, about... Turning green and Yeah, dying. yeah. Well, yeah. The, uh, horses have some pretty creepy, weird diseases, but here's a... Horse with uh, equine herpes virus. So oh, that wasn't uh, it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, it was fucking, he was, that was one of but them here's, getting fucking cum dumped all the time. Here's the first thing that kept coming up, the algae poisoning. Eh, it and wasn't this is, it doesn't say that it turns green, but no, uh, it's pretty. It was it's something that sounded like horse collar. Really fucks or something them up. like that. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway. hell yeah on them horses. I hit for me. Hell yeah on them horses. All right. We'll be right back with Professor Cho. The Queen. Queen Elizabeth, baby. Y'all want to tell you about a very cool company called Every Plate. Y'all know I'm a cooking fool. Me and Cho both are, eh, Cho? Uh-huh, and just regular fools. Yeah, also very much regular fools. But I love cooking. I love everything in the kitchen, and Every Plate does a lot to help you out in that department. Every Plate can help you skip those tedious trips to the grocery store and go ahead and give you everything you need to cook consistently affordable and delicious meals. You get to choose from 17 weekly recipes yourself and then just sit back. They'll pre-portion the ingredients, bring them to you. That's my favorite part about it because I was constantly buying too much of things at the grocery store. I end up throwing it out. I hate wasting stuff. With every plate, you don't have to worry about that. Every plate is the easiest way to eat affordably because they offer delicious dinners that will not break the bank. Plus, they've got a discount for you right here that we'll get to in just a couple of minutes. Every plate's quality ingredients come carefully packed, pre-portioned, uh, and if you're not much of a cook, that's not a problem because every plate recipes come together in six simple steps done in 30 minutes or less. You can't beat that. I don't care how busy you are. Also, along the way, you'll learn a ton of different uh, cooking techniques, recipes, approaches, culinary-wise, and save money all at the same time. So, at first, you know, I was thinking, uh, I was skeptical thinking that meal kits could be, you know, too expensive every week, but I'm convinced now after dealing with every plate that it, that is not true. You can get the same deliciousness at a much lower price. That's the best part about them. Cho, what do you think about every, every plate? First off, the, fr- the French onion chicken is probably my favorite thing that they do. It's amazing. I'm glad that they brought up the, the cooking techniques and stuff like that because that one is so important to me because... If it weren't for every plate, I wouldn't have ever known that you should put lemon zest in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And now I just stay doing it. So it's wonderful. And like you said, if you're just a novice, like it will teach you some skills. My wife used to think that she sh- she couldn't cook. And then we got we got this, and she's just like, oh, well, I mean, yeah, I can do this. And I was like, well, that's cooking, baby. You're cooking. And it uh, it's it's wonderful. I, I I just absolutely love it, and it's so good. Yeah, we're both big fans, big proponents, and people who use it ourselves. You can take it from us, and if you're into that, here's what you can do: you can try every plate for just a dollar seventy nine per meal. Can't by, that. No, by going to everyplate.com and entering the code POA. One seven nine, so that you can get started with every plate for a dollar seventy nine per meal. By going to everyplate.com and entering the pro- the promo code POA179. Y'all, that's a $104 value mm. for a service that hits like hell anyway. So you got to check it out, Every Plate, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. It's cute. Yeah. Are you feeling stuck making minimum payments on your credit card debt? Savewithconrad.com can help, and you don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket to do this. NMLS number 65084, equal housing lender. Oh, and did I mention no house payments for two months? Get rid of your credit card debt and lower your monthly payments right now at savewithconrad.com. We're back. Time for history with Professor Chow on the subject of Queen Elizabeth. Is it the second? She's the second. We found out. 
Producer Russ, look up if she's the first or the second or the third. She could be anything. Professor Cho off to a rollicking start. I on think this it's the subject. second. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I always say what I know about her. I mean, you know, hell, she the queen. Yeah, uh, I've watched The Crown. Yeah. Crown hits for me. <laughs> it hits so hard. So I know stuff about that. I know she fucks with horses, yeah. as you mentioned earlier. The horses hit for her. Uh, not doing shit that a queen ain't supposed to do don't hit for her. She what, real. What do you mean by that? What'd you say? She's real rigid about like yes. oh, what yeah. the queen oh, supposed big, to be oh, and how time. that works. Big time. She so kind of she kind of redefined monarchy. So doing stuff that a queen ain't supposed to do don't hit for her. No, it don't hit for said. her. No, it don't hit for uh, her. And yeah, you know, I mean, again, I feel like I know a, she's a second. She's All a second. Right. right on. Okay. See, but yeah, I you know, it. I feel like I know most of the things that yeah, uh, me too. Hits, that you most know. people know about the queen. Cows do hit for her. Do they? You ever seen that gif of uh? Hey, Russ, type in... Like in a funny way? Type in the queen sees a cow. <laughs> you ain't never seen this? I don't think so, but I want to. Like, fucking gif. right now. I think it's a gif, yeah. They, do you just mean it like it. it hits for her in a humorous way? Just, this cow just hits or for like her. Or like cows hit for her in the same way that horses hit. There's no way cows hit for her the same way horses she hit She sees a cow and it hits for her. Okay. Okay, <laughs> I want to see it. Let's see Let's get this going. Uh... Is it a video? No, look. Right, look. Oh, yeah, look. That cow. Look at that cow hitting. Yeah, see? That's God, what... she old as fuck. Old as fuck, boy. Dude, she's so goddamn old. I'll see if I, I'll see if I can find the... So, anyway. So Queen, so, Queen Elizabeth, as we... I, I say we all know. Like, actually, I did... Like, you know it from the movie, like, The King's Speech, and then obviously The Crown. She actually was not even at all supposed to ever be the queen, because... Her, her dad's brother was the king, her and dad, he abdicated over a floozy from America or yeah, whatever, Ed, which Edward, is a wild ass thing to have happened. It's insane. It's yeah. it's well, it's it's crazy because like now we we see like Prince Harry leaving the royal family because he's married to someone that's not royal and they're not they're doing their own thing. But he wasn't ever going to be the king. So it's like okay, what the fuck? Ever. Also, we live in a completely different time. Like we live in a time now where like because of Queen Elizabeth and the way that the monarchy ended up becoming something that was more of like a figurehead and more of just yeah. kind of like a thing that like she's not ruling with an iron fist, uh which I'll get into that later cuz it's like I thought it was cuz she couldn't, but that's apparently not fucking true. Um but yeah, so Edward the 8th was supposed to be the king and he was for like actually he never got uh crowned. Like he, oh. he never went. I thought through. he like gave it up. He, well, well, I mean, he, I know he gave it he, up. He but did, I, but he never, he never actually went through uh, his coronation. Course, coronation. He never went through his coronation. It's like his dad died, and then he was about to do it, and he was like, "Okay, cool. Well, I'm gonna have this lady. She's my wife." And they're like, "She's a divorcee from America. What the fuck are you I talking? Ain't it. That ain't it." And he was just like, "But I'm the goddamn king. I can do whatever the fuck I want." And they were like, "No, you can't." And he was like. Well, th this is what I want, and they're like, "Well, you can't be king." Which I, don't, I it's kind of weird. Who to me. was Who saying says this? that to him? Yeah, I think it was just like the family was basically like, "Look, if you do that, we're not, we're all, we're all done with this shit." And he was like, "Well, if I can't do that, all this king, king shit? shit, I guess." And so he was like, "Fuck it, I'm not gonna be the king." And so when he did that, his brother, who then became King George, becomes the king, and like. It's so funny because, like, you look at it through history and you look at it in the way that it's represented on the movies. Like, they all, it, it made everybody mad that he had to, they're like, you can't believe you made my dad do this. It's like, what, be king? It's like, granted, he spent his entire life kind of like Henry VIII uh, did, where he didn't prepare at all for any of this shit. Like, he was like, yeah, I'm just going to be second fiddle or whatever. And now he's, like, hoisted into power. He's got a huge stutter, so he can't, he's like, he has to, I mean, you've seen that movie, right? Yeah, movie has. Fucking, it's so good. Well, anyways, because of that, that's when Elizabeth realizes, like, oh, shit, I, too, have never prepared for, like... I mean, she's a kid, but they're like, we, now she's got to go through all this fucking training that otherwise wasn't going to happen. And for the rest, I saw that picture. You know, his brother, like, just, like, hung out with Hitler and shit. Yeah, they like, they were very Nazi adjacent. Right? Yeah, they were super their, Nazi adjacent. But was it was like Prince Philip's family too. Was yeah, they were from Germany. Nazi adjacent. They were from Germany. They changed their name from the Mount from something to the Mountbatten's because it was like before that it was like yeah, you know, right. and they were like we can't have that shit. No, but like yeah, he was like kind of a Nazi sympathizer. Shit, they they say that he did this kind of like he wanted some press, and at that point Hitler was Hitler. 
but like nobody knew about the gas chambers yet. Yeah, this so it was early Hitler. Early Hitler. Hitler's old shit. Early. It was like when Tom Brady was like, "Yeah, Trump, whatever," and then three right. years later, he's like, "I don't wear that hat no more. I don't know what to fucking tell you." So, anyways, yeah, but I mean. He was still Hitler. He was still very much Hitler. He like never it, wasn't it, Hitler. It did, I don't think it hit for people who weren't into Hitler to yeah. see him fucking with Hitler. Right. Even though he wasn't yet full Hitler. Yeah, right. Does that make sense? Full Hitler. No, yeah, I, no, I agree with you. Yeah. So, so, yeah. Hitler so, did not hit. No, Hitler, I, and, and hey, listen, in every camera I will say this, we're on record as saying Hitler uh, does not hit. We also not fans of genocide not, or 9-11. 9-11, yeah, did not, not hit. Not fans. So, yeah, so Elizabeth becomes a queen. She is the longest reigning British monarch Yeah. now. Right. It's funny because, like, you're like, yeah, now, okay, she's, like, fucking 90-something years old. But, like, only three or four years ago, she was actually the 46th longest reigning monarch like there was like that's weird even when she was not and that's something that i kind of want to talk about when she was 90 she was still like the 46th longest reigning monarch which is like such fucking proof that like if you have a shit ton of money you just live a long time you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like they were all still like cousin fuckers but like they all live to fucking 99 or 100 because they don't have to fucking lift a finger for anything they've got the best goddamn health care in the entire world well, a whole bunch i mean there's been a there's shitload a bunch of them of die young there's been sure. a shitload of them sure. and a whole bunch of them did, i mean her dad died relatively young yeah that's true he was like in his 50s or something like yeah, that. yeah that's young yeah it is he had but i'm saying they've been plenty of kings that died like genuinely young you it, know like i know okay people. i get it but it is wild that there was at least 46 of them that lived into their 90s like, yeah. that, like living into your 90s is fucking insane mm -hmm. like for for anybody um there's a couple weird things about like i'm really i really want more today to talk about being the queen because we're going to do this this lady right here you won't believe it will come up a lot on this show you know, and I want to talk about like events in her life, but really they deserve like kind of their own moments. So I want to talk about just like being the queen. Did you know this is a really fucking funny thing? Did you know that she has her own like sign language with her staff and she does it using her purse? Have you ever heard about this? No. No. Okay. So is she it so she doesn't have to like sully her vocal cords with speech directed at the servants <laughs> no at i the mean peasants, that's you know? funny but no it's that it's so that she can have conversations with them when she's talking to other people like if she needs to let them know something but she can't actually say it she like so yeah if she if she uh if it's she, like i feel like your wife is like hey, if i if i squeeze your shoulder maybe let's that. get the fuck out of here it's that yeah. well so she's got her purse and i think if she holds it like if she puts it on in her right hand that means that, like, that's her saying, like, I need to use the bathroom or we need to wrap this shit up or we need to, like, get the fuck out of here. If she puts it on Queen the... Queen got a shit, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Time to roll. Dude. Queen I, got a shit. I, I bet... Uh, I actually thought about this. I bet you she takes some of the fucking dankest shits on earth. Why? What makes you think because that? Because, first off, old people shit is, like, a different <laughs> level of shit. Like, yeah, you, you've smelled old people shit. Dude, yes. I've walked into, like, a public bathroom after an old man walks, especially, like, an old kind of fat man. Yes. Mm. Rough. And, mm. like, you know, they she drinks a lot of tea, which is a natural diuretic, so you know it's just, like, shooting the fuck out of her. <laughs> and they eat, like, a lot of caviar and a lot of, like, stank stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying, like, I've thought about it a lot. And, like, I don't think it would hit to smell the Queen Queen's Elizabeth's shit. shit. Yeah, probably not. It probably wouldn't hit. You're right. But it's funny to me that everybody knows what you're talking about. I know. I know. That's Because I, I feel to get like it. that kind of defeats the purpose. It does. Like, now all the, now the other public... dukes that she's in the room with, when they see her grab the person, they'll be like, hey, Queen's got to take a shit. Right. No, it's like the NFL. you got to switch up the so signals. Th that's actually yeah. what I want to talk about because there's the one that is the most hilarious to me is if she's sitting there talking to someone and she puts her purse on the ground, that means... I'm in a very boring conversation <laughs> and I want to get it the fuck over with. And it's like, I'm sure for a long time that worked perfectly. But now that the Internet's out there, like you're sitting there talking to the queen. And she and puts you her purse on her like, like, I don't hear for the queen. I'm not, it's like getting the gong on the gong show. Yeah. Now, granted, these Imagine people. Imagine boring the like crustiest woman on earth to death. Now, granted, the like, people that are like talking to the queen are like probably in such a bubble that maybe they don't be reading internet factoids like this, but I'd have to imagine. I bet they all know. Yeah, right. I, because I, somebody's I like, been like, by the way, if you, dude, it's that, like the opposite of Carson calling you over to the counter like right, if the queen puts a fucking right. purse down. That, that seems like the 
type of thing, they would all oh, for know. Sure. Like they would share that information. And it's funny to think that the queen thinks she being slick, right, or whatever. Which again, she was for a long time. I'm yeah. certain of it. Um, whoever fucking let that? I guess it's somebody, somebody in the staff that was just like they quit being on her staff and then they just started running their goddamn mouth for a book or something like that. She's got two birthdays. Um, which is something you can just do as the queen. You got like a queen day? So, you got like a coronation day? Yeah, so what yeah. it is is she's got makes sense. April 21st is her actual birthday. Right. Um, but the official queen or king birthday is celebrated in June, but it's not the, it's not because of the coronation. It's because, and I can't remember the king, but like a long, like a lot of kings ago, mm. one of the king's birthday was in December and it was just really cold and that didn't hit for him. He didn't like having to share the presents with Christmas. Yeah. And it was like, I, I, you know, yeah, I'm, so not, I'm like, not getting as much uh, shine as I should because yeah. Jesus' birthday is around here. Yeah. Every kid that and had a birthday wanted, close to Christmas knows how that goes. And he wanted to You'd get, rather have, in the summertime, you can do more activities. That was what it was. He could go on a slip and he slide. Wanted to get drunk birthday. in the yard he went to get drunk. he did he wanted to get drunk in the yard and he was like my birthday's in june yeah. that's when it is and so like now that just became a thing we're like yeah so every summer we that's when we celebrate the queen that's when they have their big part but like obviously i'm sure she still has a pretty good time on fucking april 21st too um could you guess off the top of your head how many presidents she's lived through shit uh uh hang on i, I mean I'm not actually counting them. 15? 14. Yeah. That's fucking pretty good. Yeah. 14. She's uh she's only met 13 of them. Guess the only president that she didn't meet. Mm. Is it Trump? No, she met him. I don't and, hit. No, it don't hit, but she kind of pulls some G shit. Uh, she, when she met Trump, because he, he don't hit for her, she wore some like, I can't remember what exactly it was, but she wore a brooch that was like, somehow showing her affiliation to Obama and like that president. My next guess was going to be Obama because it's like, you know, they're all like, well, he's still black. black. He's still still black. black. black, I know he's the president, but this is the palace and he's black. (laughs) I feel like Prince Philip to keep him out out away from the darky. Where did you play basketball again? (laughs) 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 But no, no, she, she, when I had I was researching this and and by the time of the person making this video or whatever they had said she hadn't met with Trump but then she ended up meeting with him. No, it was LBJ for some reason. And I, the only reason I assume is because he had such a short tenure as president. Yeah, and there, he it, also like he a lunatic motherfucker. He, he used to pull his dick out all the he time did. and take shits in front of people and stuff. That probably right. wouldn't have hit for the queen. He did, and Shane I can't try to say wainers and smell poop. And I can't <laughs> she remember right. And I can't remember <laughs> she ain't trying to see wainers and smell poop. <laughs> She ain't. He did do that shit where he was just like, I, "We're having a meeting, but I'm taking I'm a shit. taking a shit during the meeting." Yeah, I'm gonna say my dick. But I do. I, you remember that episode of The Crown when like Margaret met the president? Dude. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Wow, wow. My, uh, that was my favorite scene. It was like Michael. I go when they were doing the end scene of his pants. He's like, make a little, uh, make a little room there because I got a big old. Uh, <laughs> what what did he call it? His, I think he called his dick Jumbo. His, yeah, Jumbo. My I John, thought, my yeah, my Johnson's pretty Jumbo or something like that. I think his dick had a name was, and it yeah. was Jumbo. It apparently I was. Think. It apparently was pretty big. Oh really. yeah, dude. If his dick didn't hit, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be, be showing it to everybody. <laughs> the time. That's, that's a true. Fundamental law of the universe. That's true. Right if you there. find out, if you're like, man, that guy pulls his dick out a lot, then you know one thing about his dick. What his dick is. <laughs> his dick is. But no, she never met LBJ. But I do remember that episode of The Crown where Margaret went over there and met LBJ because they got like super fucked up together and like they had a really good time. But like, I do think it was that she, she found him to be like super vile and offensive, but like then yeah, she, right. but then she met Trump, right? you know? So like, fuck, I don't know. Uh, I, we're going to talk about this on the next episode. I'm pretty sure, but she collects, uh, she collects corgis. It's a big thing uh-huh. for her. She collect, and they were all from like a Royal bloodline of, of course, corgis yeah. dating back. Like, I think they were kind of responsible for the mutation of this particular corgi into an abomination of God, which all <laughs> little dogs are, sure. even though I love them. They, I'm, I love them, yeah. but I'm still going to admit, like, yeah, they ought not they be. They ought not be. No, they ought not be. Um, the arrogance of man. And, like, her, so her, the thing with her is that she, like, all of her dogs every day get individually, and she's got, like, 30 at any time. They get individually prepared, almost Michelin star meals. Yeah. Like, they eat yeah. way better than fucking even me and you eat, and me yeah. and you hit. Um, This is a funny fucking fact. She 
technically, it's this is one of those things we were talking about earlier with that dude where like she just kind of she gets to claim that she owns stuff. She owns every mute swan on the river. <laughs> what on mute mute swan? Like, that's a type it doesn't of doesn't make sounds. No, that's just a type. <laughs> I was thinking Russell, the same up, thing. Look up mute swans. Yeah. That's just a type of swan. It's like a breed it's, of swan. It's called a mute I thought swan. you meant like they had to identify if a, if, every if a swan. That swan talk. That's a queen. Yeah, 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 that's right. a queen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, she'll like that. that one. She hates a squawky. She hates a mouthy fucking swan. Swan. Yeah, I was. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that swan don't talk. Yeah, that's, that's the queen. Yes. She owns every mute swan on the River Thames, and also owns Thames, I believe Thames. Yeah, Thames, and also owns all of the whales and dolphins and sturgeon in all of British waters. Those are all hers. So, <laughs> so again, back to your point about that Mufasa. So she could be like watching a video somewhere in like where Britain has water. Yeah. They used to have all the water. That, yeah, they I mean, still, they still a bunch have of water. most of the water. They still got a bunch they of water. They still have most of the fucking water. So she's watching a video and like a fucking whale pops up and she's like, "That's my whale. That's my. You see that whale? That's, That's Timmy. My, yeah, that whale here for you. Yeah, That's my whale. <laughs> That's my whale. Uh, could you get like if you had to guess what her actual personal wealth was? What would you say it was? Well, this goes back to what we were talking about yeah. earlier with Monsa Musa. I know it's kind of it like, like, does it count her personal wealth? So that doesn't factor in, like, whatever, the estate of the crown? No, it doesn't. How does she have separate wealth? Horses and from? horses and property. I know, but, like, where does she get that? That all, it just seems like... It's like she bought the money with money that wasn't hers, so how can it... Well, I it mean... It seems like that's, it's all tied together. Well, then, then, then fucking Elon Musk ain't got no money either. You know what I mean? Because all no. his was given to him. Yeah, but we're talking about what is owned by the crown or not. I'm saying if she bought her personal ship with what came from the crown, right. then it's like, it's all part of the same thing. Whereas right. Elon Musk, it came from his daddy. It, right. Elon Musk isn't a prince right. or whatever. She's 50, a, set, no, 85 million. 500 million. Damn. Yeah. So See, she, the, like, the I, Windsor family is worth $30 billion, which honestly is kind of like low to me. But what... And that has nothing to do with the crown. They're worth thirty billion dollars outside of like no the wealth of the crown. No, that is, I think, technically the crown. I okay. think that's I'm about to say because yeah. that is wild to me if that's yeah. the case. No, because no, no. like they say this is another thing too. Uh it cost I it, mean all them whales, that's worth a you know That's a shit dude, sell the whales. She's got shit. A, yeah, she's got you like, think she she's got at least there, a couple billion in do, whales. Do you think that her and Keep fucking my money in whales? What, do you think that her and, and fucking what was his name? <laughs> Philip do you yeah. think they were sitting there at night and ever had the thought like, well, if it ever hits the fan, we can sell, sell the our whales. whales. <laughs> yeah, like, we I, might I mean, have to sell our whales. I mean, that's like I'd say like three, gonna sell whales too. It's like Chinese. That's at least now, Two hundred horses, Vikings. Yeah, a whale is two hundred horses. A whale is two hundred horses. So what is that in dogs? Fifteen times two hundred. Yeah, what you got? is uh, well, fifteen times two. Was that thirty thousand? Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand mm. dogs yep. is a whore, is a whale. That's the most math I've ever done on the spot. Can yeah. I tell you that? You're good. Uh, so it cost three hundred and seventy five million dollars a year just to keep the monarch, like just the monarchy's expenses. Like, not necessarily things that they buy, what? just like travel, their food, their staff. $375 million. $375 million a fucking uh, year. She's she, like, that's just a lot of whales. That's just to keep, like, to keep them up. She's also got. Do they own the whales because of, like, the country, you know, Prince of Wales? Maybe. They're like, oh, oh, that's cute. We got whales. We should have, have all the whales. whales. Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, probably not. No. I feel like, but maybe. no. But I like I like it. I well, like it, where your head's yeah. at. Uh, the li I'm the literal prince of Wales. Yeah, yeah, right. I got That's all these true. whales. She's like, he's like, I'm the prince of Wales. She's like, okay, well, I'm the fucking queen I'm of the Wales. Queen of Wales. Hey, How about that? All, all these whales. whales. All these whales. All the whales. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> that's how much it costs. Look, that dolphin. That's hers. That is for her. That that's, is hers. That's her dolphin. That is hers. Um, it costs three hundred seventy-five million dollars just to keep up the monarchy. She has the world's most expensive brooch, which is called Granny's Chips. That what? It's called Granny's Chips. The world's most expensive brooch is called Granny's Chips. Yeah, because it's made up of a bunch of old diamonds. Like they're old, and so they're tiny pieces of the diamond. So it's Granny's Chips. Uh, and it costs a brooch. Like, dude, it's this right here, right? Yeah, right. It costs $62 million. Yeah. Uh, she also has her own ATM. 
at the fucking at Buckingham Palace. She normally doesn't ever have to have cash, but every now and then she finds herself in like a tipping situation. And so she just goes to her own ATM and just prints some shit. She also doesn't need, this is weird, she doesn't need a driver's license or a passport because those, because those are made in her name. Like, a, a, they're made in her name, so it is her, so she just can go. Like, she just, like, like you just know who this bitch is. You just pull out money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, money. This yeah. is me. And, and, That's her ID. And so, you know, we were talking about how, like, at this point, it seems like the monarch is, like, kind of just a figurehead or whatever, and they don't really have any power. For sure. That's not true. She has all the power. It's just that she has decided not to do that. She, right now, if she wanted to declare war without talking to Parliament, she fucking could do it. If she wanted to go to war with Iraq, she could fucking do it. But she just has decided for how she is with, like, she wanted to look good to the people, so she doesn't do any of that. She doesn't give any opinions. She doesn't fucking, like, like I, I'm not going to let you know where I lean either way. She also, like, if she if she really gave a shit, she could have just not elected Boris. Like, the country elects it, but if she was like, I'd rather it be Tony Blair again, Tony Blair would be the prime minister. So she does actually have complete authority over the state. Um yeah, because she could appoint anybody for prime minister. She also can have anyone in the country. Killed. Yeah. Ki- Dude, yes. Killed, arrested, locked up for anything because British. Off with the head. British people are not citizens. Kings used to love to do They're that. They're subjects. Queens. But she really, she really could have. She just decided this person don't hit for me. They're gone. Bye. But like, yeah, well, that's like, dude, that's like classic well, I queen know, shit I know, right there. I know, that's, I know, that's I know what it queens is. do. I know it is, but we forgot with her. We're like, yeah, they can't really do that anymore. But it's like, no, she really, like, say what you will about this person, but she has been like, I think all that's fucked up, and I'm not going to do it. So she could just put someone to death still. Absolutely she could. Part of it, look, she also, I think, has to realize that, like, dude, that shit would not fly anymore. They would overthrow her. She could do all that, you're saying, yeah. but she ain't going to, and no king after her will ever no, do that. No, I know. Because... You would get overthrown. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that I, wouldn't just stand It's a lot of... I'm just, but I'm just saying, like, you would think she would have slipped at least one fucking time. <laughs> and murdered somebody? <laughs> dude, I'd have had, somebody. I'd had a couple just, brandies yeah, and murdered a motherfucker. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, she, you know, Diana, fucking but, who knows, yeah. but like... Uh, all right, yeah. Uh, but yeah. of course, that's a conspiracy. She apparently could have just been like off with her head. Um, so th- the last thing I want to talk about, because I know that we're running out of time. First of all, so, you know, sometimes she just flies on commercial airlines on British Airways. No. Why? Yeah, just because sometimes it's just more convenient. That's hard for me to believe. It's inside. I, I don't believe it, but right. I read it five di- in five different. I was like, this motherfucker don't know what they're talking about. They're yeah. Like, no, sometimes. Now, they will like clear out the whole thing for her, but sometimes it's just like, yeah, it just makes more sense. I'll just go there. Um, she, oh, and this is another thing. She does not have to pay taxes, but in starting in 1992, she started paying income taxes just to curry favor with the general public. She was like, yeah, I don't have to, but like, at least I could say, like, ah, hey, fuck, you know, what do you know? I, I at least give my share back. And I'd say income tax on fucking, you know, $500 million. Like, she's, that's I don't like, fucking know. That's that like nothing. Bezos giving a billion dollars to yeah, charity. Right. Who yeah, cares? Dude, fuck the monarchy and Throw fuck her. I'm just saying, like, she seems like an all right one. You know what I'm saying? Um, the So this is the last thing I want to talk about because this is really fucking crazy. And this is something that, honest to God, it wouldn't surprise me if when this episode airs, this has happened mm-hmm. because she's real fucking old. Her death is like they have been planning for her death since like 1960, you know, and like every year are putting more implementing more things. The code name for her death is London Bridge is Down, which is another one of those things where now that everybody knows it, it doesn't matter that there's a code name Mm -hmm. because her dad's was Hyde Park Corner. And the reason they did that is so they could communicate it to a bunch of people over the airways without everybody freaking out and knowing what happened. They could just be like, oh, it's on Hyde Park Corner. And the people in the know would be like, oh, that means he's dead. Fuck, we got to do this. Hers is London Bridge is Down. Everyone fucking knows that. So you may as well just be like, hey, that bitch took a shit and died. You know what I mean? Um, so here's some crazy things about when she dies. All right. When she dies, every news station and radio station has a blue light, like just somewhere on their like monitor desk called an obit light. And when it goes off and goes blue, everyone knows that means, holy shit, the queen has just died. And in so that, they have a dedicated, the queen is dead light. Yep. 
because it's like the with the pope it's smoke yeah they put up a certain color of smoke and it means pope dead because mm, right. because the reason is bbc one bbc two bbc four like all of them and all the radio stations they have shit sent to them that is when this happens you are required like it's a law like you this is what you have to do when this happens um there's going to be 12 days of complete mourning and every TV station and radio station has to play a certain thing, and all of those things have already been picked out by the Queen. The like, there's clearly a million documentaries on the Queen. The Queen has selected the ones that they're going to play whenever she dies, and they have to fucking play those. There's also a ten day, uh, twelve day uh, restriction on humor. Like <laughs> none, which is so British. It's so fucking British. Yeah. But you're not a, like they're not allowed. Like all the any comedy show on BBC or whatever will not be played for twelve days. Every single television program has to be about the Queen or sad. Those are the requirements. Not only that, and I'm obviously they're not going to enforce this. But within those twelve days, it is illegal to laugh. <laughs> Are you like, shitting me? I swear to God. Like, it was one of those things where they were like, yeah, <laughs> they're, they were like, yeah they're not going to enforce it, but, like, it's illegal to laugh. You know what I'm saying? They take death, like, very seriously over there. Like, the Queen, when they would be flying, they when they travel, they pack a morning a pair of morning clothes just in case somebody dies while they're traveling so that when they come back they exit the plane wearing all black and looking proper morning because it would be uncouth you know not to do so so yeah all all the, they're all going to be playing that bullshit like you literally can't laugh they've obviously already got all of her obituaries and stuff from the stations and they've all been approved by the monarchy and they get updated like you know, every week, like they just make little fucking changes or whatever. And the last thing I wanted to say about the queen, which again, not the last thing I'll say about the queen on this podcast, just on this episode, how, how much money, we just talked about what's cost set $375 million just for them to exist. How much is her death going to cost? Dude, you won't guess it. You're not going to guess it. Because okay. you're not going to factor in a lot of the things. He's been, he's been pretty close so far. Yeah, but you're. Nah. But there's no way for you to factor in everything. How much her death is going to cost? How much her death is going to cost, like, England? Like, in expenses and funeral. Yeah, and, like, the expenses of, yeah, that. Or you mean, like, the ripple effect of having her die? The ripple, the ripple effect. Oh, I don't know. A billion dollars? Eight billion. Yeah. Because it's not just her funeral cost, which Diana's right. funeral... Diana's funeral alone cost $10 million, and that wasn't actually a royal funeral. It was a royal adjacent funeral because she wasn't a part of the royal family at that time. It was just like, well, you know, she used to fuck Charles or whatever. It's because those 12 days, the entire country is going to be at a standstill. Right. Like, it's going to be like, you know, like pandemic type shit. Like, literally, like, they're not allowed. Like, people will not be going to work. There will be no commerce. Television revenues will be down. Like, and, and also how much a fucking funeral is going to cost. But, like... Eight, it's estimated eight billion dollars when she fucking dies. It's gonna cost. That's so, wild. That's fucking super wild. So again, that's not everything about Queen Elizabeth. That's just kind of what it's like to be the queen. Mm -hmm. But I uh, look forward to uh, in several episodes covering m momentous uh, uh, events in her life because, like, you know, again, like fuck the monarchy or whatever. But like a pretty fascinating individual. I mean, the whole thing's got to. If it wasn't, we wouldn't be doing this fucking podcast. But yeah, very fascinating old broad who takes <laughs> the stinkiest shits. I guarantee it. And loves to watch horses. Fuck. Loves to watch horses. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, look right, at yo. look at how gangster. Oh yeah, she is. I mean, super gangster. Are rappers intrigued by this? Like, oh, I guarantee the, you, I mean, rappers are intrigued by. It. They're they're they love king shit. Yeah. And so they would have to love Queen. Mm. That's debatable. That's true. All right. See you next time, airheads. Here on the airstream. Putting on ass. Hey, like, subscribe, tell all your friends, Thank download, you. and uh, yeah, put it out there. If you love it, everybody else will love it too. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Royalty and rednecks are alike. They both like cutting and picking fights. Biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong. Sit on down with Corey and Trey and learn some fancy shit today. We'll laugh a little even when they're wrong. They'll take you to a magical place where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares. And
They keep it debonair at putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs. What's up, everybody? Hey, Airheads. What's up, Airheads? This is uh, Clearing the Airs. Hope you just enjoyed that uh, wee bit of rambling lunacy you were just subjected to. We just listened to it last night. We sure did enjoy it. Uh, oh, we sure did. Uh, Laugh from top to bottom. Yeah. I don't know if that's something we should say about ourselves, but it's true. <laughs> We'd had a wee bit, you know, bit of the tipple. You know. I'm sure they'd think it's weird that we just listen to our own podcast. Well, we've mentioned before that we do because we, we have to because we record them so far removed from when we release them. And God knows what's on there. <laughs> yeah. So we got to check them out. And it's always a surprise. It's like listening to a brand new podcast that we've never heard. We ourselves. learn stuff. Hey, or correct ourselves. Like, for example, so the point, sorry, we're in Scotland. We're in Inverness. It's Scotland. so hard to not keep, talk that way. Yeah, right. Uh, anyway, I, this the idea of this was this segment was originally supposed to be like, we're going to need a space to correct the dumb shit we say. <laughs> and so that's how this came about. We've been just not doing that. Yeah. And I'm about to just not do that once again, despite the fact that last night while listening to it, Past me, so the version <laughs> of Trey you just heard said something during the episode that prompted present me, the one you're looking at now, who was listening to the episode, to go, dude, I know that's wrong right now. <laughs> like, I don't know how I could have not known that was wrong yeah, then, then when right. I said it, because I'm sitting here now like, you dumbass, that ain't <laughs> true. And like, I was like, but I'll do it during clearing airs tomorrow. It'll be fine. That's what the segment's for. Anyway, I don't remember even a little bit what prompted me to think that. It obviously had something to do with horses. At first, I thought it was the part about girl horses not doing shit but get fucked. But <laughs> but then I past me went on to correct that statement anyway and it was just a joke and now girl horses do all kinds of other shit too and I said I clarified that already so I don't think it was that all I'm saying is I know there was something in this episode you just listened to that I said that was dumb and wrong and so whatever that is except this as my nebulous clarification of it because I don't remember the specifics but I'm telling you right now if you think I was dumb and wrong you're right and I agree and I'm sorry I would also awesome. what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I would also like to take this time to formally apologize to the girl horse community mm -hmm. for having referred to them, and I quote, as nothing but a bunch of cum dumpsters. Okay. I think you left the stirs off for some reason, which I thought made it hit oh, harder because yeah? you because you were spicing it up a little bit, like you just said cum dump. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I know that I know now that they are more. And I was insensitive uh, to lady. And by the way, I do the I, I did the opposite of you. Like in the past couple of weeks, when we were listening to it, where instead of going "you dumbass," I've actually been hearing myself say something and go, "Damn, I didn't know that." Yeah. Too past me. So I had a blast with it. Uh, it I did think it was super funny. I hope y'all enjoyed it. We're gonna get to a couple emails in a second, but just to let you know, we really appreciate y'all throwing those emails to us. You can email us at putting on airs at gmail.com and if you have if you love the show but you're not subscribed i don't know why you wouldn't be but if you could do that that'd be awesome and also go leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts or here on youtube if they even do do they do re reviews on on youtube i mean there's a comment, comment section, section. Yeah. yeah we'll go in there and tear that shit up sure uh so yeah i want to get to some emails uh here and here the airmail my bad yeah, some airmail. I'm doing them this time because uh, we're using Corey's phone to record this little behind the curtain information. I know it's very interesting, but that's why I'm reading these. I uh, got some good ones here. This one's from Claire Sosnick. I'm taking a shot in the dark at that name. It's one of those names with very few vowels, which is fine, yeah. Claire. I'm not upset. It's just <laughs> I don't. I ain't good at words, and so it's hard. It's C Z O S N E K. The last part of her name is Snack, which is what some of the internet calls snakes when they're trying to be cute. Look at Snack, like what? like doggos, like, like doggos. That's so stupid. A little Snack. Yeah, you're you're not stupid, but that's, that's just your name. That's not your fault. Because to me, a it. snake would be like like kind of how like a like redneck picture would say, of Snack. They're, they're, they'll caption it like I am Snack. Bleh. That's so dumb. That or, that whole part of the internet culture makes, just kills me. You know that They're like baby talk equivalent bullshit. I hate that shit. Yeah, you so know. Much. You know that like I, I would. Wouldn't you say that I'm probably the biggest dog lover that you personally know? Mm -hmm, probably. Okay. And even even, yeah. even I when I see someone 
call a dog. Look at the doggos yeah, or dog puppers. puppers. Oh my god, dude. Fur baby and all Get that shit. Get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah. To god, just call it a goddamn dog. Anyway, Claire, that ain't got nothing to do with you. Nope, I forgot we, we were we even doing this. We just thought we should mention. Yep. Anyway, from Claire. Hi, I've been listening to Putting On Airs While at Work. I thought it a good subject for Trey's segment with bit where he talks about things that fancy people in Rednecks both enjoy. It could be baked goods. I already agree with you. Who doesn't love baked goods? Two things brought this to my mind. One, Corey's Pavlovian response to the word toll, <laughs> making him think of Toll House cookies. <laughs> Meemaw's love making cookies. My southern auntie's big on pie, no, no matter the occasion. Second, Corey inquiring about puff pastry in another episode had me thinking about how in college I took a class on French cuisine to satisfy my cultural diversity requirement. I would have been all over that uh -huh. shit. Uh, and, I wish I'd have gone to college and learned did hit and learned that rich people <laughs> love the most intricate of desserts. For example, the puff pastry, the souffles, the creme brulee, all that shit like that. Love the show, and I'll have y'all know I don't give a goddamn either way if squirrels experience love or not. But I was genuinely cracking up listening to it. Love y'all. Oh, actually, it signed Emma C, but the email address is from Claire. It's Emma Claire. Hey Emma Claire. All right, appreciate it. Uh, Bite Goods is a good idea. I'm going to put it in my notes right after this. Of course, it'll be two and a half years before y'all hear that episode if I add it to the list of ideas now. But I do like it. French patisserie is super fancy shit. So the fanciest of fancy shit. And then you got moon pies, right? So Little Debbie's. Little Debbie's. Like, you're definitely 100% right about that. Man, that um, creme brulee thing really brought back... I, I, I love creme brulees. Did I tell you that my mom used to like... She would, I mean, this is probably when I was in middle school or something, because mom, this, that's when my mom really started to be like, I'm going to be a fancy person. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. She used to make us all, like as a family for dessert, individual little creme brulees. Like she would make the custard or whatever. And I didn't realize, I didn't realize like how not that complicated that whole process is. Like you just dust it with like some of the sugar and stuff and, and then, then blow towards that motherfucker. It. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, every server at O'Charlie's used to do that with our creme brulee, right? Like, because it's that's all you, right? Not O'Charlie's, Crawdaddy's. Yeah, I it. bet it hit. Yeah, it did hit. Yeah, you just put uh, sugar on the top, and if you, I don't have a blowtorch in my kitchen, yeah, in my house, you are get one. But uh, but yeah, if you have a blowtorch, you just hit it with that, and that's of course you have to have the custard first. Yeah, but, of course. Uh, but yeah, that part of it it does make it seem all fancy, but that part is actually super simple. All right, this is from Elizabeth Catuli. Hope I'm saying that right as well. It says, sorry, I really am an airhead. That's all right. No apologies. We all are, baby. I'll go ahead and tell you. Don't know for sure what you're even referencing here because of how stupid we are and we can't remember our own stuff. But anyway, I'm going to read it. In England, there are dukes and duchesses, viscounts and viscountesses, but earls and countesses. All the other titles are French. Because after the Norman Conquest, all of the aristocracy was French. It was a hell of a colonization. Yeah, that's true. We, we knew that. But Earl is Old English. Because if you're the guy who's recently taken over everything and killed off the previous leader, you really don't need to give your tenants an open goal. I think so I know what she's indeed. referencing. Okay. I think you did like a stripped down version of that bit of the bit where you say I half of them named Earl, Earl and yeah. I think I probably went what even is a goddamn Earl You're and you were right. just like I don't know a duke yeah yeah actually I think I kind of remember that now yeah. so anyway that's a uh, yeah Thanks thank for you for that email. information appreciate it that was very interesting uh what here's Elizabeth Catulli again oh. which is fine uh got a follow up email hi lord crowder and colonel forrester Thank you for the I Shakespeare. Think she sent it's from two separate they weeks. Are. Yeah. I can tell already they're from two separate episodes. Thank you yeah. for the Shakespeare episode, in particular the gagging anecdote when I nearly coughed up a lung. My sympathies are with Colonel Forrester because he, he himself has a very sensitive gag re because himself had a very sensitive gag reflex and once threw up reading an advisory leaflet about an end endoscopy. I understand how stressful it can be. Who did that? Her? She did? I, it wasn't Her. me. Right. Uh, either Elizabeth saying she did or maybe her you know, partner did or something anyway. Yeah, gagging. He knows all about it. Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, it goes on. A note on the C word. I'm being careful not to upset Google sensitivity, not because I fear using the word myself. Shakespeare loved that word. And she's talking about cunt. Cunt. Uh, Shakespeare loved the word and loved punning on it. Hence, country matters. The appearance of several constables in the plays, including one called Dull, which makes me wonder what or of whom Shakespeare was thinking, a dull constable. 
If you're looking for more etymology, etymologically, of course, before Shakespeare, Geoffrey Chaucer used quint, quinte, no, not pronounced quaint, used oh, okay. quaint, and doesn't that present a whole new way of having fun while on the tourist trail, meaning a pretty pleasing thing. Thank you, Jeffrey, so much better than dull. Uh, especially after the wife, especially about the wife of Bath and Samuel Pepys used it in very nearly every female across his path. Sam was a complete man whore, I'm afraid. Hope you have fun <laughs> in England, though I'm disappointed you haven't come to Ireland. I think you'd do well in Vicker Street. Thank you again for the podcast. It's a wonderful way to start the weekend. Very quick antidote, not about Ireland, but about an Irish person. Uh, we did, uh, I wish we were going to Ireland too, simply a matter of time and logistics. I'm 100% going to Ireland in uh, my lifetime, probably before too awful long. But while we were in, because uh, I love it, but while we were in London, we did stand-up shows and they went really well. And afterwards, it had been like a couple hours afterwards, people were just like hanging out in the front area of the comedy club, which was a bar. So people out there drinking and stuff. And after a couple hours after I had gotten off stage, because I had another later show that night, so I was still there. But I'd been off stage for like two hours. This guy comes up to me and he was like, uh, so I want to ask you a question. So, uh, you know, I saw you up there doing your thing and it went over brilliantly, you know, but uh, I've observed you out here since then and it's become obvious you're quite a serious and nervous person. <laughs> Like, I was just wondering how you sort of, you know, flip that switch or whatever on the. And that guy was from Ireland, if you can't tell what I'm doing. No one's uh, ever had you pegged so quick without really knowing. I you. know, but it's also kind of weird. It's like this dude's just been sitting at a table watching me. Yeah, yeah. But I told him, and this is true, first of all, he, I am those things. But that night, I was jet lagged as fuck. We had shows at midnight. I was so tired, but pushing through. And I, you know, what was more nervous than usual because I'm doing stand-up in a different country for the first time, you know. So, like, he was spot on, but, yeah, I just thought that was funny. I don't know if all Irish people are quite so blunt. That astute, to the point. yeah. And, well, I, yeah, also astute. Uh, Is right. that right? You sure did. Yeah. Nice. All right, so anyway, we'll definitely get to Ireland sometimes. I love all of our fans' last names in that I don't love trying to pronounce them because this one, this next and final email is from Kimberly Buonomo. Buonamo, Buonamo Bay, Nomo. down there in Buonamo Bay, but that don't work for you if that is how it's pronounced, sorry. Uh, what do you think? Buonomo. Buonomo. I'll say Buonomo. Yeah. When, uh, What's she doing when, when she goes to show? When, she, she ain't Buonomo. Yeah, I was, that <laughs> I was, that I was, I was, was real reach. What do you got? I, I was going to say, <laughs> what will happen when Marsha Blackburn dies? They want Buonomo. Buonomo. That's way better. Yeah, Thank you. Way cleaner. Uh, all right. Yeah, whatever it is. Kim B. Kim B says, Hey guys, so my husband and I watch y'all every Friday night. We came up with a drinking game or smoking game, whichever you prefer. But anytime y'all say hitting or shit hits or anything like that, we take a drink. Well, sorry for your impending demise. We are not liable. We are no way liable for the funereal cost incurred by the living spouse, uh, uh, ultimately resulting from alcohol poisoning. Because I don't know how you could possibly do that uh -uh. and stay alive, let alone conscious. But that hits for me. Kim goes on. Wait, there it was again. Kim goes on. We are obviously trash people. Obviously. And assume that other trash people would enjoy this game. Thanks for helping us take the stress away from the week. Just putting out good vibes going into the weekend. Love you guys. The Davises. What the hell? I know. All their names don't match what their says on. It, is that thing people no, do? Are you supposed to do that? Are you supposed to use like a pseudonym for an email address for privacy reasons or something? Because everybody signed it something different than what their name says on the email here. Maybe. Mine ain't like that. If you get an email from Trey Crowder. It says it's, from Trey it's Crowder. Says, yeah, right. Yeah, me too. I mean, at the bottom it'll Women say, are getting married. Yeah, but women, look, but women do be getting married. They do, just like be, they be shopping, shopping, they be getting married. married Everybody yeah. knows it. But it does say Davis in her uh, ad, what, email address. It's, I'm sure it's just, it's just a maiden name. It's not that complicated. It's just weird that it's happened every, every single, single time. Every single time, right. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that was great. We, we, have to, we have to assume that they're listening right now, right, and watching on Friday night. Yeah. Well, it that hits. hits. Shit does sure hit. does hit. Shit hits. Shit does hit. New yeah. hit. We hit. hit. Email we'll, hit. Email hit. The mail hits. <laughs> the mail does And hit. we... <laughs> We will see y'all next week on Putting On Airs. Remember to subscribe, download, tell all your friends. Right, review. Review, all that stuff. See you, love you, bye. Skew. Skew. That's right.